I'd heard of albacore fishing in the mid-Pacific and thought that was really exciting and actually went down and stopped working on the sport fishing boats and started working on a commercial boat down here in San Diego that was being built. And the man that owned it and was building it, at the time when they launched it, he said, Manito, which in Spanish means my son, he said, you're the captain. And that's when I found out. And that's when I first ran my first boat. I very much love the sea and love what I do. If, if it's not a place for people that don't have a real attraction for it and want to be there. You can't force people to go there. It's too much work and it's too dangerous. The thing is you have to, uh, to some extent, have a real love and a real passion for it. Um, the guys that we fish with that are here that are alpha members and American fishermen are, um, they're unbelievable. They'd give you your, their left arm. And that's what it takes. It's, it's a very uh, tight group of human beings that, are, that look out after each other. When you're out there at sea uh, doing what we do, you need that kind of, not just camaraderie, but that kind of help from everybody that you're involved with. And it's a very unique thing. And um, I have utmost respect for the fishermen that I know. And most of them have been involved in fishing since they were little kids. Absolutely, I'm proud to be a fisherman. I, I couldn't ever see myself being anything else. This is an artisanal fishery. We've been doing this. This is the way it started, and there is nothing changed. But this is the same way they've been fishing since the 20s. But we've catched the fish the exact same way, one at a time, pulling, pulling line. It's the way you've seen it in the movies, and that's what we do today. This is the best that is. This is what I do. I, my son's been fishing with me since he's 12 years old. And when we're in the fish, there's no place else he'd rather be. When you start at five in the morning and you get done at 11 at night, there's still no place you'd rather be at the end of the day. I love what I do. I've been doing it for my whole life. We have uh, a crew of seven, including an engineer, a cook, and a chummer who also uh, all fish. They've been with me for uh, quite a while, and some of them are second-generation fishermen. The way we fish with pole and line, especially, is a very highly skilled fishery, and a, even a person that's adept. It takes them a couple of years to really become proficient. It's like a real good fly fisherman. There's, there's an art to it. The relationships between these fishermen are unlike any probably in our world today. When I, what I mean by that is, when they're out to sea, they're a couple hundred miles to a thousand miles, all they have is each other to trust and to rely on. They can't call the Coast Guard. And they rely and trust on each other to the point where if each other needs fuel, if each other needs bait, uh, they communicate with each other on where the fish is, and they watch each other's back for their own health and survival. And that, it's courageous. It's courageous to get on a boat and leave fishing and not know where the fish are, how much you're going to catch, when are you going to be home, your family's waiting for you, you're out there in the elements of mother nature, and these are not very big boats as you can see. Uh, these boats are sm very small on the range of tuna boats or tuna vessels around the world, and to catch every fish one at a time with a pole, it is very, very hard to imagine. And there's generations of fishermen. Even though it's been very tough going over the, over the years for them, they love the ocean, they love what they do, they know it's the right thing. They are, they are the custodians of our stock. What, what they see out there in the ocean, they communicate with the people that manage the fishery. And they're just tremendous people, absolutely tremendous people. The methods that we use, they're over 100 year old methods. It in itself is, looks after the environment just by virtue of the methods you're using. There's other things around the world that uh, technology and gear types that are, you know, very efficient, but that might not be the best for the environment. And uh, the public at large should know that myself and the fishermen that I surround myself with and know very much care about their future. And their future is very important to them. So you have to be involved in something sustainable. It's absolutely possible. And I think more than possible, it's a mandate. We have to have st sustainable tuna. So we felt that pursuing the MSC certification 
would give us a platform to tell our story on a world stage and truly define this artisanal, historical U.S. fishery. As a result of telling the story of this U.S. fishermen, the fishery, the families, the communities, the products derived from this fishery, we've get garnered tremendous support around the world, not only in the United States of America with consumers, but consumers all over the world. There's a choice to buy a product that comes from a safe and sustainable fishery where high quality is assured as well as uh, good conservation practices. We don't dent this fish, the population. I see more fish now than I have my whole life. Oh, we're stewards. We want to, I want to hand this boat to my son. That's, you know, and my son wants it. Yeah, very proud.